Hello, I am that British guy and it is question time once again. Today we ask, what can Horizon Zero Dawn teach other AAA open world games? Now Horizon Zero Dawn by Guerrilla Games came out earlier this year and was a massive success both commercially and critically. It launched its developers right into the centre of the gaming community and made everybody take notice. It managed to piece together beautiful graphics and cinematics, compelling characters and storylines, something that you could really, really get invested in, really, really smooth gameplay mechanics and controls, and it managed to do all of this using an open world, something that a lot of games seem to suffer with. So why was this so successful for Horizon Zero Dawn? Now, I'm not against open world games as a whole, but I do think that there are a lot of developers that are making their games open world because that is seen to be the in thing at the moment. A perfect example of this is Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. Every other entry in that franchise puts you at a starting point and then guides you from area to area in a very specific order. This was very important because of the way the story progressed. It made you experience things in a certain order and prevented you from missing out on any important details. Even Peace Walker presented the main missions in an order so that you didn't miss things. But this was thrown out of the window with the Phantom Pain and the story suffered for it. It has been nearly universally agreed that the Phantom Pain has the best gameplay of any game in the series as well as the worst story. And this was something that the series was renowned for and something that may never be fixed, especially as Metal Gear Survive doesn't appear to be very story heavy or add to the lore in any significant way. This of course is partly down to its lead creator leaving, but Survive again adopting an open world will make cohesive storytelling difficult. Well, a lot of developers can do a good job with it. Things like the Elder Scrolls and Fallout by Bethesda, for example, mean you can explore to your heart's content and still come back to the story whenever you like. Successes like these lead others to try this formula because they see these games selling well and they want a piece of the pie. And why wouldn't they? The problem is that a lot of what is outside the main story feels like filler and the game world can feel lifeless in parts. So what you end up with is a disjointed story and a lifeless world outside of the main narrative. Sometimes we want to be led down a set path. And if that path is compelling, we will experience it again and again. We don't always need an open world to make a game feel bigger than it really is, purely to make us play it for 50 extra hours. How does Horizon Zero Dawn manage to succeed with the open world formula then? Well, the main way is that the story they wanted to tell really lends itself to an open world. At the very start, Aloy knows nothing of the wider world, and once she is granted the freedom to explore it, you really feel like she is discovering everything alongside with you. By not holding the player's hand, Guerrilla Games were able to craft an experience whereby you felt like you were living through their protagonist, and you genuinely wanted to go and explore this vast expanse and find out what hidden treasures were lurking within. This in turn helped you meet more people and discover new things, which made you want to learn even more. It becomes a cycle of discovery and learning, leading to more discovery and learning. You learn so much about the world and its history just by speaking to the people and finding certain objects. Proof that not all storytelling has to happen in cutscenes. That is another way that Horizon really gets it right. Wherever you go, there is always someone different to meet with their own story to tell. All these minor characters help to make the world feel real and alive. And although a lot of the quests do turn out to be fetch quests or defeating a strong machine, what game doesn't do this a lot with their side quests? And that's the thing, I don't mind doing that for side quests. It's when I have to repeat this for the main storyline that I get really annoyed with this mechanic. And when you do decide to get stuck into the main bulk of the story, the game manages to lock you into it for lengthy periods. This prevents you just going off on a tangent and losing that sense of immersion. This, I feel, is the perfect balance. I can wander around at will 
leveling up or collecting items or just going for an explore but when it comes to crunch time you are in for the long haul until you get to the end of it whether that be discovering important pieces of the story puzzle defeating a boss or just getting out of a certain dungeon or area so all in all Horizon Zero Dawn doesn't have a whole lot of tricks up its sleeve but it does manage to do all of the following very well. Firstly, it tailored its story towards discovery by putting you in the shoes of a protagonist that knows as much as you about the game world. Guerrilla Games then made that game world as densely populated as possible with minor characters and stories that add extra bits to the world that make it feel real and finally they lock you into the important parts of the game so that you remain immersed in them and become more invested in what you're doing and discovering these are all very simple things and not something that is beyond any developer making AAA games but Guerrilla Games managed to bring them all together for Horizon Zero Dawn and I really hope others follow their lead and only make open world games when the game they are making lends itself towards it and not for the sake of it. Then if they are going to make an open world game, make the open world a world, not just one map that is very, very big, but also very, very lifeless. And that is what other AAA games can learn from Horizon Zero Dawn going forward. What did you make of Horizon Zero Dawn when it came out? And are you, like me, really, really looking forward to the DLC that's coming out later this year? Please let me know in the comments below. Give the video a like and a share and subscribe to the channel. You can also find me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter at RightlyWrongly. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.